On the misty shores of November the 8th, 2019, a peculiar phenomena struck the world of gaming. The days surrounding the release of Death Stranding still feels like yesterday. Despite barely adhering to the aspects that would make the game globally anticipated, Death Stranding became one of the most fascinating games to look forward to ever since its earliest promos. It comes from the enigmatic mind of Hideo Kojima's wasn't the only reason that made it so intriguing. The game barely fixated on or promoted aspect of the gameplay that attracts the masses, and yet the nuance brought forth by it were quick to maze lots of gamers. Fast forward to today, and we are already celebrating the fourth anniversary of this thought-provoking and quite a divisive masterpiece. For a game that departed so much from the conventional norms of the AAA games, its reception was arguably much less divisive than it could have been seen. From my experience alone, a bunch of mainstream third-person shooter gamers I knew ended up growing a liking for Death Stranding too. Not forgetting how relevant the game became during the COVID-19 pandemic, which has occurred shortly after. The isolated world of Death Stranding became increasingly relatable within only a few months of its release, and may even be a turning point for the game's reputation. Since then, the game's divisiveness has only decreased, with the Death Stranding director's cut playing a prominent role in that too. Despite having grips with the game's cryptic narrative and slow pacing, even most of its critics would have a bunch of things praised about it. Being in a game's extraordinary eerie atmosphere, standout soundtrack, or highly subversive gameplay, there's always something to be fascinated by for everyone. This is what makes Death Stranding such a beautiful game in its first place. With how despised its radical gameplay subversion, it has an admirable facet or two for everyone, one of which could be the gameplay subversions themselves. This is what we set out to do in this video. So, I wanted to discuss the impact of Death Stranding that has had, not only in gaming and gamers as a whole, but also my personal experience with the game. I wanted to get in a few of the key events that's relating to the game that has occurred since its release. So July 2020, the game is released on PC, with the pandemic making the release even more impactful and relatable. October 2020, the Sony PlayStation 5 is released, which leads to the games being playable on it to do the backwards compatibility. September 2021, Death Stranding Director's Cut is released for PlayStation 5 providing notable gameplay additions and DLC. March 2022, Death Stranding Director's Cut is now released for PC as well. December 2022, Death Stranding 2 is announced by Hideo Kojima at the Game Awards of 2022, which adds Ele Fanning to its star-studded cast. September 2023, Death Stranding Director's Cut is announced for iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Coming from the genius behind the Metal Gear saga, there were lots of expectations surrounding Death Stranding, even more from those who didn't expect it to be their type. Kojima pioneered the tactical espionage genre, which too was something not many gamers at the time were used to. And that is what made many gamers so enthusiastic about the new strand type gameplay that Death Stranding was offering. And regardless of not being everyone's type, Death Stranding did turn out to be a groundbreaking and unique experience. The hype regarding Death Stranding was related not only to its premise, but there's also a lot of tension going on in the background before its production too. A few years before the game's release, Kojima's misadventure with Konami led to his exit from the company, which resulted in the creation of the Kojima Productions. Since then, fans of Kojima couldn't hold back their anticipation for his future projects. Death Stranding has some of the most cryptic promos and development details too, which is only added to the intrigue around it. Upon its release, Death Stranding earned a quite a divisive reception. 
It defied easy categorization, blended elements of action, exploration, and delivery mechanics into the genre all of its own. It made a genre of its own by defying easy categorization and making a unique assembly of action, exploring, and delivery mechanics. The narrative was the cherry on top and has aged really well. The world of Death Stranding came into existence due to these explosions that are referred to as Death Stranding events. This has led to a post-apocalyptic setting, with these life-sucking creatures called the BTs all over the globe. Everyone lives in the isolation, and people only ever communicate via the holograms of themselves. Delivery packages is the only prominent form of labor, which is what Sam Porter Bridges, the protagonist, does as a routine. The mission, as well as the philosophy of the game, is to reconnect these isolated regions. It was arguably one of the most visually beautiful games of its time too. The art direction succeeded at the expressing hauntingly beautiful landscapes, including rugged mountains and desolated plains. The game's eerie world managed to immerse players with ease, at least if they had the patience for this sort of a game. The soundtrack, which mostly comprised of the marvelous music of Low Roar, only added even more attraction to the game. But it wasn't just sight and sound that made the game so phenomenal. Its meditative yet challenging gameplay was extremely original and nuanced. The freedom one had with the routes, with the means of the getting there, the crucial inventory management, and encounters with the supernatural entities called BTs. However, the elements of the gameplay that represented the philosophy of Death Stranding the most was its asynchronous multiplayer elements which allow players to help one another in their other solitary journeys by building structures and dropping supplies. The theme of connectivity and unity within even isolation is what the game succeeded at producing. Speaking of the game's philosophy, it thoroughly explored theme related to life, death, connection and environmentalism. Many found the story highly unique and thought-provoking, but it's understandable for some to have thought of its convoluted or even pretentious since a cryptic storytelling of Hideo Kojima's games coded up substantial plot elements well. The game's reception was initially very divisive, the most of the appreciator hailing addits as a masterpiece and most of the critics nearly finding it unplayable and overly repetitive. The overall consensus leaned positive, but the ratio for its critics was notable. There is, however, no doubt that Death Stranding succeeded in achieving the extraordinary. It remains highly relevant artistic and cultural achievement. It beautifully brought in new modes of gaming and to a fair degree, also redefined what it means to be a multiplayer or a co-op game. Hideo Kojima's audacious vision created a game that continues to be a topic of discussion and debate among gamers and critics alike, cementing its status as an influential and unforgettable release in the world of gaming. Sick of Even when a game or any work of media uh, is universally acclaimed, everyone adores it for their own peculiar reasons, based more prominently on aspects related to one's own life, one's overview, a phase of one's life, or a phase within the globe itself, as an example, the COVID-19 pandemic. It is seldom that I come to love a game that tires me so much, sometimes with such a degree of repetition persistence and lack of the conventionality simulating aspects of the gameplay mechanics. The game speaks far beyond the traditional notions of the simulation and gaming, as it uses one of the very real predicament and struggles to its advantage. If anything, the more tired you get, the better the game makes you feel once you truly begin to understand what it stands for. It's also quite criminal not to play the game on a controller, with how well synchronized the character's movements and balancing is with the button placement. That way muscles located around similar regions of your body to those of Sam's feels the, the burden. Four years have passed since Death Stranding, and I've yet to be this invested. Materially and emotionally, both of the equal level in video games. The relatability with Sam's struggle as well as the emotional depth of the game surprisingly turned out to be quite uplifting for me. 
I have played the game three times, and while making this video it kind of makes me want to play it again. It is sort of a game that you'd want to forget everything about so that you can play it all over again for the first time. With Death Stranding's 4th anniversary, one can only hope for more game developers to take risks in like these. Even with us being fortunate enough to get Death Stranding too soon, the world needs more of Death Strandings. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys all later.